Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Doug Shepherds from W3C. Uh, we're a web standards organization. I want to talk a little bit about uh, open peer review, uh, creating community and transparency. That's what it says on the slide. So that's what I'm going to talk about. So uh, 25 years ago, Tim Berners-Lee created the web. You might have heard of it. Has anybody here used the web? Two, three people? Awesome. I think this is going to catch on. Uh, 20 years ago, he created uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is W3C. That's, that's where I work. That's where Yvonne, my colleague there, works. So uh, what does W3C do? We write technical specifications. These are the blueprints of uh, features for web browsers, for ontologies, for implementations. So basically, we write technical specifications that say you must or should or must not do this particular thing when you encounter this kind of content, when you produce this kind of content, etc. And we also write tests. And those tests are there to make sure that for each testable assertion in the specification, uh, we have one or more, we have two or more interoperable implementations. And this means that you don't have to write as many tests, you don't have to all have all this frustration of developing for one browser and then developing again for another browser. The tests are a critical part of what's making the web better. Dan talked yesterday about how much it's improved making web content and in, in the last 10 years it has dramatically improved and the browsers have gotten much, much better and much, much closer. Uh, and the third thing we do is we write developer documentation. So. Uh, uh, we have a site called webplatform.org, and this is where uh, we are trying to make it easier for people to onboard onto the web platform. You know, 10 years ago, you could have viewed source and learned a little HTML, learned a little uh, CSS, maybe a little bit of JavaScript, and called yourself a web developer. If you did that today and called yourself a web developer, you'd be laughed out of the room. The bar is much, much higher. And so webplatform.org is there to help you uh, learn the cutting edge stuff and the basic stuff and we're you know it's still it's a process we, we're still working on this site but we hope that it's gonna be really good um, and here is a triangle uh, to show that they're all connected and there's a hierarchy <laughs> thank you Nick <laughs> uh, so our process W3C's process used to be uh, somewhat opaque uh, and a little bit closed. Uh, when it first started, there was always an open peer review process, but working groups themselves worked behind member-only barriers, and they, you, couldn't, uh, you couldn't see the drafts in progress. You could only see what the, what the, speci what the group decided to show you at any given time. Uh, now, in the last 10 years, we have opened up our process to get much more developer feedback. And the developers have stayed away by the millions. Um, so we have this open peer review process. We're transparent. We have public documents at all stages of working groups to work. Um, we're accountable. We have an appeals process. It's called a formal objection, technically. Um, so if you really disagree with the, what a working group decided to do, uh, and you, you gave them feedback and they said, no, we're not going to change it, you can appeal that. Um, and there's also a lot of goodwill in the working groups. The working groups actually want to help you. They want to help developers. That's, that's what motivates us. We want to make the web better. The feedback process itself is not great. So I'm going to give you a little demo of that feedback process. So here is technical specification. So the first thing you do, let's say you find an error. You're reading the spe specification. You find something you're like, Oh, that eh, they shouldn't. There should be infinite sources. Blah blah blah. Whatever it is, right? You have some feedback, and so then you say, "Well, I want to. I want to tell them about this. I want to tell them uh, that this. You know, that they should change this." So you kind of try to figure out where you tell them, and you look around, and then somewhere in the status of the document section that you skipped over, rightfully so, because it's clearly boilerplate. You find this, please send comments about this document to public audio at w3.org. And you're like, okay. So then you, you go down, you copy the section of the spec. Maybe if you really consider it, you copy a link to the section of the spec that you want to give feedback on. You draft up an email. <clears throat> so you, uh, you join a, uh, 
you subscribe to a mailing list, uh, you wait for the feedback, you send in your feedback, you wait for a response, and in the meantime, a uh, hundred other developers have their own issue that they're concerned with, and maybe you want a new feature, or maybe you're making a correction, or whatever, and you're having to listen to everything everybody thinks about the specification while you're waiting for yours. So you're sitting there, first off, many people don't even like using email anymore anyway, and so you're sitting there subscribed to this mailing list. You have no idea, no expectation about when a response to your email is gonna come in. So you're drinking from the fire hose. Everybody is sending in feedback, and people are talking about things you're not concerned with. So then I saw a Hypothesis give a demo about annotations, and I thought, hmm, why didn't I have that idea? And I thought, okay, here we go. How about this? How about when I find something in the spec that I don't like, I say, I don't want to mix the left and right channels. What if there's more than a left and right channel? Oh, classic. And let's hope that this is, what's that? I, I can't hear what you're saying, sorry. Uh, <laughs> you get the idea. Uh, so, how is it, just a second. You get the idea. <laughs> Demo effect, yay. So, here's, a, here's an example of, this is, by the way, this is still under development, obviously. So here's an example of uh, an annotation, right? Uh, and here we go. Uh, here's an example of a reply. So why can't we just write an annotation and say, hey, fix this, and then somebody in the context of it. It is no easy matter for us, the W3C working groups, to match up what you said to exactly where in the document uh, you wanted to, uh, you know, where, where something was in the document. Let's see if I can find another annotation. Oh, demo effect. Curse you demo gods. Um, so let's take it a step further and let's say, hey, not only do I want to uh, find, be able to give feedback and have a, a, a process where we give feedback, why can't I say, uh, let's see, this here, this is a testable assertion. Boom. I'm gonna say, this is a testable assertion. I'm gonna call out every testable assertion in the specification, and that's an annotation. And I'm gonna be able to go through and systematically attach every testable assertion with the category testable assertion. And then I'm gonna have a nice list of all the things that need to be tested. And then I'm gonna go write tests for each of those things. And then when somebody has written a test for it, they say, they annotate my annotation, and they say, I've written a test for this. And then we rerun that test. And somebody says, okay, the, here are the test results. And a bot leaves an annotation on that test's annotation and says, okay, here are the test results. And that itself is an annotation. So when you're looking at every testable assertion in the specification, you find the test, a link to the test, you find all the results of the specification. Does this work in Internet Explorer? Does this work in Firefox? Does this work in Chrome, et cetera, et cetera, all down the line? So with annotations, you can leave feedback. You can get, we're, we're working with Hypothesis to get an email system so that when somebody replies to your feedback, you will be sent an email, or you can be sent another kind of notification if that's what you want. And boom, suddenly you don't have to drink from that fire hose. Suddenly we don't have to hunt and peck Hunt, and pick, hunt, hunt for where you made a comment, what you wanted changed. We can even use some sort of primitive uh, revision control in this so that you can actually say, okay, here's the status of this bug or here's the status of this comment. And all of this is going to be searchable and indexable. Rather than you subscribing to an email in, in, a, in an opaque process, we're going to be able to annotate the spec itself. There's a challenge with W3C specs. One of the interesting challenges is that they change over time and each version has a different URL 
So we're having to resolve that. What, that's an interesting problem, technically, right? How do you say this document and this document you know, are, are, are the same document or should have the same feedback? Something might change from spec to spec. We have to rebase those. We need robust anchoring. So let's move on. Uh, so W3C, uh, so about this web thing, I think it is catching on. About a quarter of the world, of the world uses it. Uh, W3C's community is about 32,000 mailing list subscribers currently. Uh, about 1,500 active working group participants, uh, over 400 member organizations, and 70 W3C staff, about half of whom are technical support staff, like myself and Yvonne. And so you guys outnumber us. So uh, we want you to get involved. Uh, we are, we've got a proposed web annotations working group. Yvonne mentioned that. Uh, I'm hoping that in the next two to three months, we'll actually be launching a web annotations working group. Join W3C, join the working group. If you can't join W3C, give us public feedback, which hopefully through, will allow through annotations. Uh, so later on today, I'm going to have an open session about I ideas on improving W3C's specific peer review process uh, and also improving the signal to noise ratio. We're going to need to be able to weed out comments and be able to maybe, I don't know, upvote or something. I'd like your feedback on how we can do this to make sure that we get the highest quality comments and so that the working groups aren't overwhelmed. Um, you can also write documentation on development stuff at webplatform.org or write tests at testthewebforward.org. These are both W3C gigs. Um, and as a final note, uh, again, we are 25 years, W3C is 20 years old this year. The web is 25 years old. Uh, if you go to web at 25.org, you can see uh, our, our site about this. If you tweet some, your experience about the web at web at hashtag web25, we might incorporate that at web at 25. We're going to have a symposium here in the autumn uh, in, in this area. And we all have a lot of work to do to keep the web open. And it's all, all of our responsibility to keep this open. We want you to come, come give us feedback. So thanks very much. So now you all understand W3C perfectly and you're all going to get involved? <laughs> One person, yes! <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Okay, thank you.